Oh no, you accept Islam? You want to marry a Malay woman? My goodness. Oh, no wonder you accept Islam because you want to become Bumiputra. You want to have the privilege of the country. from IPSI like to share with you why I chose Islam and also my journey towards it. Brothers and sisters, one should ask a question, a very important question. Every human being born in a second census, not of his or her choosing. I did not choose my country of birth. I did not choose my family. I even did not choose my race. By the way, I'm an Indian. And very important question, I was not given the freedom to choose my religion from the very first day I born to this world. And my parents are Christians. They are staunch Christians, especially my grandmother. And I followed the religion of Christianity and the Roman Catholic denomination. So that was not my choosing. But anyhow, I thank him that I was born in a family who believe in God rather than not believing in God. Very interesting. Why Islam? Why not maintaining Christianity as a religion of mine? Brothers and sisters, from the age of five years old, I have a longing to know God. I have a longing to know who is the creator of this universe. This is my first call towards understanding or embracing a religion. It started very young and my grandma used to bring me to the church every Sunday till to my teenagers. When I reach my teenagers, I have a friend of mine in St. Xavier's institution. By the way, I studied in St. Xavier's institution in Penang until from five. So I have a friend. He brought me to a Protestant church, AOG, Assembly of God and Sunday School. That was a very beautiful moment of my life, which I attended the Sunday School where I was taught about God, I was taught about salvation, I was taught about purpose of life. Interesting, and it was quite nice. And I can see the fellowship there. But something always disturbs me. Who is the God? Who is the creator of this universe? I never think in my life that could be the answer comes from Islam. I never thought that. I'm a churchgoer. I attended Sunday school. I enjoy it, no doubt. I have some sweet memories of attending Sunday school until today. By the way, why do I need to believe in God? This is another question. Why should I believe in God? Why should I accept a religion to believe in God? These are the questions, always mind-blowing questions. Did I read the Bible, by the way? <laughs> did I read the Bible? Honestly, I did not read the Bible from cover to cover when I was a Christian boy. What I know, the priest was sharing the verses of the Bible. What I know in the Sunday school, some verses of the Bible, but honestly, I did not. But this was a greater plan that Allah had for me, that one day my sister, my elder sister, who have a Muslim friend, she gave me a gift of the Quran in the Malay translation. That was the moment my worldview of religion changes. When I was coming back to searching God, I used to look up on the sky and look at the sun. And I used to ask this question, this is so great. Can this be a God, the sun? When night comes, I see the beautiful moon. And I was hoping Jesus will be coming along with the moon. This is what I, I felt, especially Christmas, when the beautiful moon comes and I think Jesus is coming as well. And I was, well, will be waiting for Santa Claus to come midnight. And Santa Claus did not come. But anyhow, the feelings of religious feelings is there. And when I see the sun, I, I recall about God. When I see the moon, I talk about Jesus. I think about Jesus and Mary. 
because I was a Roman Catholic and the day I got, I did God. And when I see the stars, I will look for something. The turning point came when I was given the Quran. The first question in the Quran I wanted to know, who is God? And God willingly, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Him, I opened the Quran immediately, chapter 112, Surah Al Ikhlas, Purity of Faith, four verses which very touched my heart, provoked my mind to make a very important decision. And by the way, these four verses of the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even a very beautiful occasion. The Quraysh pagans was asking about God to Prophet Muhammad, who is your God? Is your God made out of silver or gold? Surah Qa, who before accepted Islam, Surah Qa asked that question. When Prophet Muhammad migrated to Medina, he met the Christians and the Jew. The Christians and the Jew asked the same question. Shiflana Rabba, man hu Allah. Shiflana Rabba, man hu Allah. Who is your God? What is the attribute of God? So for that, Allah replied in the glorious Quran, chapter 112, verse 1 to 4. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Something touching here. Something touching my mind, my heart. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most merciful and most gracious. Allah demonstrating Himself. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Kul hu Allahu ahad. Say, Allah is one and only. Allah is Saman. Allah the eternal absolute. The focus of all of His creation. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begot not, always begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufwa nahad. There's none like unto Him. Nothing is comparison. Whatever you see in this universe is not God. Whatever we see in this universe is not God. It's only a creation. He is the creator. Everything belongs to Him. And what we see is just a creation. And what strike me was in Islam, the concept of God. What strike me, what pulled me, what engaged me is the concept of God. What? Accepting Islam? You're converting to be Malay. Oh no! You accept Islam? You want to marry a Malay woman? My goodness! Oh, no wonder you accept Islam because you want to become Bumiputra. You want to have the privilege of the country. So these are those words have been thrown at me when I accepted Islam. And this is a great misconception that we should remove from our non-Muslim friends. Accepting Islam is not for worldly privileges, but to seek the kingdom of heaven. I repeat, my friends, accepting Islam is truly a blessing. Accepting Islam is a truly a guidance from God. Accepting Islam is a mercy, the highest mercy of God to His servant, and to seek the paradise of God, not the worldly privileges. Worldly privileges is not permanent. When people make allegation that I accepted Islam because of marriage, I married my wife 15 years, 15 years after accepting Islam. And what privilege you are talking about, Bhumi Putra? I worked it hard from the beginning and I used to cry. I don't receive any government support financially for my work. I used to cry. But the help of Allah came and I'm trying to do my best in sharing Islam and removing the misconception of Islam to our non-Muslim friends and so well, Muslims as well. Very important brothers and sisters, I invite everybody. When we talk about religion, any religion, we should begin with our intellect and rational, not emotion. Then we will find the truth. When we want to talk about religion, especially Asia part, people tend to be very emotional. But we should use rather the intellect and rational to understand a religion. And I chose to use intellect and rational. And I did some comparative religion, yes, truly. I studied Christianity back again. And I touched a little bit of Hinduism and Buddhism. And I studied Islam from the source, not from the pattern of thinking or behavior of people. I accepted Islam through a very rational intellect discourse, 
surely, certainly, with the mercy of God, with the mercy of God, Allah chose me to be a believer. What a beautiful scenery. Green. And it makes the heart so peaceful. And the weather is so cool. And I'm behind the tea plantation, also green. And it's the coolness of the eye to see green. And that was Islam for me. Islam brought me peace. Islam brought me tranquility. As I see the beauty of these green leaves behind me. And it goes through my heart and my eyes. And Islam came to me exactly like these beautiful green leaves. Alhamdulillah. Praise to Allah. One of the most significant my journey to Islam moment was the doubt that I have about Prophet Muhammad and his prophethood. I have no doubt about God. I have no doubt about his oneness. But later on, I have doubt about Prophet Muhammad due to the info that I received at that moment of time. The allegations they pour on to him that he's a liar, he's a false prophet, he copied the Quran from the Bible. And I went through restless nights. Sometimes I couldn't sleep and my, my level of faith became very low, very weak. And Allah surely loved me so much. And he had a big plan for me. In 1992, I met a man called Sheikh Ahmad Didat. And I was working in the Malaysian Alliance and I was working in the airport and I was the person in charge of passenger handling, departure and arrival of passengers. And I was introduced to this man for the very first time, the late Sheikh Ahmad Didat from South Africa. And I went to him and I say, Sir, I'm a revert. And he's very happy. Congratulations. What religion was yours before? I say, I was from Christianity, from the Roman Catholic denomination. And I told him, Sir, I have no problem of believing in God, Allah, but I have little doubt about Prophet Muhammad. So what he did, he took this book from his back, this book called What the Bible Says About Muhammad. And he took his pen and he wrote something, my son there, my son then he, and he passed it, this book to me by saying, read this, share to your family and relatives and friends. If you do not do so, you are useless. I got shock of my life. I went to him for an advice, but he gave me this book and he said, if I do not read and share and I'm useless, I was, what? Share? And he went into the plane. Mashallah, after my work, I went back home straight away. I took the book. It's about only less than 65 pages. And I started to read word by word. And believe me, brothers and sisters, dear friends, from that day until today, I have no single doubt of prophethood Muhammad Sallallahu And it is interesting. It's mind-blowing. It's thought-provoking. When I read this book, and one of the prophecy about Prophet Muhammad can be found in the book of Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, Hikko, Mamitekim, Wikolo, Muhammadim, Zahdudi, Wa Zaharai, Baina Jerusalem. See the word Muhammadim, Muhammad. But when they translated into English, whether King James Version, International Version, you are not able to see the name Muhammad. You will all be able to see his mouth is most sweet, yet is altogether lovely. Muhammadim is translated as altogether lovely. This is my beloved and this is my friend, all daughters of Jerusalem. So the name of a person has been translated and also, I was enlightened later on when I visited him in South Africa. I was enlightened 34 places in the King James Version Bible prophesies the coming of Prophet Muhammad 34 places, such as in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12. In the book of Abaku, chapter 3, verse 3. In the book of Malachi, and you can see there are a lot of prophecy of the coming of Prophet Muhammad, especially in the book of Isaiah. And in the New Testament, in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 12, Jesus says, I had many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How by when I depart, I will send you the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth are mentioned in the Greek as parakletos. I have seen this movie, 
Passion of Christ, the director was Mel Gibson. When he mentioned this prophecy, he mentioned Ahmed. Who is this Ahmed? Prophet Muhammad. So 34 places. And I invite my Christian friends to ponder again these prophecies. These prophecies, example, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18, I will raise up them a prophet, a prophet among their brethren, like unto you. The name of Jesus is not mentioned. The name of Prophet Muhammad is not mentioned. So how one can conclude that particular prophecy belongs to Jesus. So we need to study, research sincerely, honestly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, have opened my heart, enlightened my soul and my mind to understand this prophecy and with the help of the glorious Quran. Example, I'm giving you in the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 12, he say, the book is delivered to him who is not learned, asking him to read, and he say, I'm not learned. This prophecy in the book of Isaiah chapter 29 was not exactly referring to the chapter 96 of the Quran, Surah Iqra. Iqra, Bismi Rabbika Ladi Qala. The five verses which are revealed to Prophet Muhammad in Mount Ira when the angel Gabriel came to him and hugged at him and asked the Prophet to read. Read! And Prophet Muhammad said, I'm not learned. So these prophecies you still can find in the Bible, especially the King James Version. And I was so fortunate, the prophecy I understood from the Bible with the mirror of the Quran, the light of the Quran. Then we understand better and we balance that without prejudice. So this book has changed my life. And I remember when Shaykh Ahmad did say the word useless, Five years ago, I went to his place and I give lecture. He had passed away. And I give lecture to him in the mosque. And I told this story that I met him. He gave me this book. And he said, if I do not share, I'm useless. And I told them, today I'm useful because of that. And everybody started to clap their hand and cheer for you with takbir Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah, I praise Allah, I thank Allah that it was a plan by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put me in the airport to meet this man, Ahmadidat. And from there, I started to pick up the understanding of comparative religion, which later on helped me to engage with my Christian friends and my Jewish friends. And there are many common things that you can find between Islam and Christianity and between Muslims and Christians compared to the difference. But what is the difference actually Islam and Christianity is the concept. The concept of Adam and Eve, the concept of salvation, righteousness, the concepts. And uh, I was so fortunate, I was so blessed it was the mercy of Allah which brought me to Islam, the religion of God. And Alhamdulillah, after that, I started to share Islam with people. Alhamdulillah, people have accepted it, people rejected it. And some have accepted Islam, Alhamdulillah, they have made shahada. But unfortunately, I couldn't guide my father. And later on, he passed away as a Christian. He was not happy with me when I accepted Islam. But Alhamdulillah, my mom accepted Islam and she passed away six years ago. And I have two sisters. The elder sister, Alhamdulillah, she accepted Islam. And I have another sister, she's still a Christian. She stay in Kuala Lumpur. And she understood me and she is happy with me. But at times we have differences. And uh, it's not that easy. You know? It's easy to share with others, but to share to your own family members, it needs a different kind of approach and most of the time it's been turned down. That's the saddest part, you know. And especially when I think about my father, it's like a needle poking my heart. But at the end of the day, I console myself by saying Allah is the most merciful and Allah is the most loving and Allah is the most gracious. He knew of his creation and the rest I surrendered to Allah. And uh, one more thing that Disturb my mind beside God and Prophet Muhammad is the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? And I couldn't find that answer by using my logic or the reality of life. But well, this book had guided me to the purpose of life. The life of this world is short. Indeed, indeed. The life of this world is temporary. And my dreams that I dreamt 40 years ago almost all been achieved. Almost all. Alhamdulillah. But what else? So I believe there is a greater life a permanent life, everlasting life, everlasting joy, that is paradise, which I believe. And the Quran enlightened me on that. And to enter paradise in Islam is easy. What convinced me about Islam that all of us, every human being born without sin, that is most profound. Nobody carries other sin and nobody carries the sin of Adam. That was the first enlightenment or purpose of life.
And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he quoted saying that every child is born in the form of fitrah, natural, fatrah. Fitrah means origin, without sin. The soul is pure until we are given the criterion of choice. And the beauty is that when one do one good things, whether man or woman, whether he or she, rewarded 10 times. In the month of Ramadan, 70 times. More than that. And if you commit a sin, you are accountable for one sin, not 10. Can you imagine, friends, you do one good deeds, one sin, the one good deeds is 10, the one sin is one. So 10 minus one, you still have nine with you. And of course, with the mercy of Allah, one will enter paradise. And I pray to Allah that Allah grant me and my family, my friends, and all of us will enter paradise. Inshallah. In 1990, somewhere about 4 o'clock, it was my first entry to a mosque called Masjid Kapitan Keling in Penang. I was surprised to see some non-Muslim friends coming from German Holland visiting the mosque. I said, huh? Non-Muslim can enter the mosque? And that was my first meeting with a non-Muslim coming to the mosque. And I took the opportunity to welcome them and to share about the mosque, to share to them the heritage, the history of the mosque. And they was very impressed when I started to explain to them the function of the mosque, the history of the mosque. And they started to ask me questions about Islam. In 1990, I was very young. I'm only tall. I think I'm 19 years old or 20 years old. And today I'm 53. <laughs> Still young. Young in the heart, 19. <laughs> then they started to ask me questions about Islam. And I came to know there are a lot of misconceptions about Islam. And I took that opportunity with my little knowledge, I shared with them the six articles of faith and the five pillars of Islam. Then I started to engage daily. I come to this mosque daily until today, Alhamdulillah. And I met millions of people from all over the world. You name it, a country have arrived in this mosque. You say America, they have been here. Even people came from Israel to acquire the American passport. And I entertained them. I met many Jews in this center which they don't agree with Prophet Muhammad. At the end of the day, we agree to disagree. But we hug each other, we shake hands each other with our Jewish brethren. And of course, there are many Christians and visitors, and even Christian priests have visited the mosque. Even we have a lot of friends uh, from all walks of life have visited us. And we thank Allah that this mosque became in the heritage site of Penang. And at one occasion, 3,000 local Chinese visited the mosque. And I and my friends posted them and shared with them about the mosque and Islam. And how I must thank Allah, I must praise Him, Allah Almighty, the most merciful, the Lord of Kaaba, the Lord of Prophets. Besides, He blessed me with the greatest gift of Islam. He blessed me with one more greatest blessing. The greatest tradition of Prophet Muhammad is to share Islam. And I have the opportunity given by Allah after accepting Islam in a very young age. Until today, I started to share Islam. Sharing, sharing and removing the misconceptions. And Alhamdulillah, in 1995, I and another friend of mine established IPCI, Islamic Propagation Center International. And in 2004, we are endorsed and recognized by the authority as Islamic Propagation Society International, IPSI, until today. Alhamdulillah, and I could proudly say, I'm the founder of Mosque Tour in Malaysia. And the first mosque to open its door to non-Muslim was this mosque called Masjid Kapitan Kali. And I thank Allah that I could declare and besides Shah Hamadidah did in Durban, South Africa, in his early 50s and 60s, in Malaysia, I'm Alhamdulillah, uh, Ipsi, the pioneer of Mostur. And then in 1998, I initiated speakers from all over the world to come and speak about Islam and removing misconception. And one more thing that I enjoyed and I passion to do it is the interfaith dialogues. And I could proudly say IPSI is the pioneer of interfaith dialogue in the northern Malaysia, Penang, Kedah, Pera, Perlis. We are the pioneer, inshallah, somewhere in early 90s, interfaith dialogue, which is quite alien even to Muslim. But Alhamdulillah, we managed to do the interfaith dialogue and we have engaged with our friends from different faiths. And uh, I pray to Allah that the listeners can make dua for me, especially for my health, for my sincerity. And I also appeal to all my friends there, 
the listeners to support Ipsy, whether in terms of your doa, in terms of your energy, in terms of your time, and of course, support us with your finance, with your money, inshallah. And all our programs so far have been blessed and fruitful. And we have roughly about 30 programs. One among them is producing books about Islam, and this is Discover Islam. If our non Muslim friends are listening to this, please try to get this book from us. Inshallah, it's free. Uh, I pray to Allah that my journey to Islam has enlightened you, empower your understanding, remove the misconception, and invite more engaging of commonalities and also engaging friendship, brotherhood with other walks of life and people of other faiths. I uh, appeal to Allah that Allah will guide me and guide you to the straight path constantly. And may Allah keep us on the straight path. May Allah strengthen our faith to Him. May Allah bring us closer to Him and grant us paradise. Take care, brothers and sisters. Salaam alaikum. May peace be upon you. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our Ipsy channel for more Islamic contents. Jazakallah khair.